Building a fast robot is one thing, but building a fast robot that's also incredibly light and has massive reach is what can separate good teams from the great ones. You see, it's going all the way down to here, coordinate with this timing belt, all the way down to here with this servo. Team 19660 Sigma from Shanghai, China has created a machine that does exactly that. And it's a great example in intentional design. By watching this breakdown, you'll get a close look at how to use advanced materials like carbon fiber effectively not just as a gimmick, but as a core part of a winning strategy. This is a design philosophy that you can take forward with you to radically improve your own robots in future seasons. I'm Coach Pratt, and for over a decade, I've been teaching robotics and design. As well, I've coached national champion FCC teams and inspired board winners. I can tell you that the level of engineering and driver skill you're about to see from Sigma is world-class. In this episode of FTC Robots Revealed, I'm sitting down with the team right after a semifinalist run here at the European Premier event for the 2024-25 Into the Deep FTC season. We're going to walk through their entire robot, from the strategy, their unique intake, to that insane carbon fiber arm that gives them their speed and reach. We'll also cover their hang mechanism and the programming that ties it all together. Here's a quick breakdown of the 2024 FTC season's game, Into the Deep. The game is played on a 3x3 meter field with two alliances, with two robots on each red and blue alliance, respectively. Robots had to go into the center structure to collect plastic rectangular prisms and place them in the respective baskets on the corners of the field for eight points. Or they could bring a sample to a human. This human adds a special clip to the plastic piece, and then that allows the robot to hang this piece from the center bar for 10 points. In the last stages of the match, the end game, robots can hang from the bottom rung for 15 points, or grab the bottom bar, lift themselves up off the ground, and then grab the top bar and lift themselves up for 30 points. There are more complexities to the game, but that's a rough idea. Now, let's see how this robot managed those challenges. All right, so tell me about your general strategy for the season. Is it a sample robot? Is it a specimen robot? What's your main approach? So this one is a sample robot. And you see, we actually it's designed specifically for sample. So it's not suitable for scoring any specimens. And we can score actually literally so about six uh, samples in the autonomous period and roughly about 22 in tally up period. Wow. Yeah, it's a really competitive one. Cool. So it looks like your intake and your outtake are the same thing. You want to talk about your claw design? Yeah. First? So... Firstly, it's our call design. Maybe you see here. It's a really simple structure and it just contains several carbon, fi carbon fibers plates. So you see there's one here and there's one here and some 3D printed call structure. So yep. the structure itself, you see here, the both of them. And now it's, it's interesting looking at your claw, you actually have, you don't gear all the way around. What was your choice for making a flat positive stop in there as opposed to using a servo deciding when to stop your claw basically just we didn't need more teeth there ah, okay yeah. yeah cool very cool yeah and then you're using a color sensor here what are you using your color sensor for well actually the color sensor here is not for for detecting the color of the sample but we're actually using the light here but you see the color sensor there's light here so yep. we're just using the light to make sure that our lit lights could actually detect the samples in the submersible. Yep. Yep. So making it a little bit of extra reliability there. Yeah. Exactly. Cool. So obviously, this is your intake outtake. You've got to pivot here. And you're pivoting this point on this very long belt system that goes out to here. And so let's, let's talk about your arm next. How is your arm? You've got a large coaxial virtual four bar going on here, right? Yeah. Super large. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Well, wow, so firstly is the main arm. So you see, we call this part as the main arm. Mm -hmm. And it contains those carbon fiber structure. It's based on carbon fiber structures. And we're also cutting slots and holes on, that, on this arm. Did you see and see that? Did you water jet it? Did you get it cut out on a... We did the water jet. Okay. But it's, we didn't matter of fact, we can't cutting it in our workshop because yep. it's too expense, expensive yeah. to have such a kind of CNC machine. Mm -hmm. So just remember that we're a team from China. Yep. We have a really huge market on manufacturing, especially on carbon fiber. Yep. So we actually search on the platform mm. and chose some workshop and they help us to cutting those carbon fiber with a really low cost. I'll say that roughly the entire 
carbon fibers on the robot, it costs roughly about 300 US dollars. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's uh, many teams will be envious of your manufacturing abilities to be able to do that so cheap. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you've got this main arm structure here. Yeah. You have a sub arm over here. Yeah. And you use carbon fiber to keep this thing really light. And you've used these aluminum rods to keep your rigidity up. Yeah. Yeah. And also, it looks like to tension your belts at some point. Well, on some think... of them, or is it just the way that it ends up running? Well, I don't think we have any tensions no, here. Yeah, there's no either. There's no tensions. Yeah. But yeah. here, I think there's one. Since well, it's here, oh yes, there's yeah. one. Okay. And then, how are the motors themselves actually driving the? Oh, so you've got timing belts. Yeah, you've got time belt here, and this one is actually driven from down here on the servo. Yeah. So, so the servo is actually the one that pivots this arm up and down. Exactly. We did yep. this because we don't we want to minimize the weight that's just being applied on this forearm. Yeah, you got like nothing on the end here. Yeah. It's super light. And it's really helped us for precise controlling this forearm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then uh, what is actually moving the main belt arms here? What motors are driving the actual main, large pivots? So you see there's two motors here. Oh, right here. Yeah. Oh, okay. And those are like a, a rev motor? Yeah, it's a What's rev motor. What's your gear ratio on 18 that? 18 to know? 40. Okay. Yep. And we use a pulley. It's, a pulley is connected yep. to this motor yep. and use timing belt. It's a mm -hmm. it's a 5M timing belt. Yep. Yeah. And just... And do you know the size of the teeth here and the size of the teeth on this? Because that's quite a large reduction off of that. Yes? Yeah. If you don't know off the top of your head, that's okay. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> yep. But you're clearly using a pretty large reduction there. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Cool. That is, that is such a cool arm. And I've seen that in competition. It's amazing just how stable that is. You wouldn't think that such a such a large arm that pivots out yeah. would be so stable. Yeah. So we we actually me. had many experiments yep. on those foot arms. So last year, we actually also designed, well, it was the center stage season. Yes. So we actually also designed a foot arm structure. And well, by using a foot arm structure, you really allows you for precise controlling of the robot but the problem that year we encountered was the weight so it's pretty heavy and we just cannot increase the traveling speed of the robot it's just totally it's too heavy yep yep 100 percent. and how does your hang work it looks like you've got some sort of passive claw on there it's a passive hook mm -hmm. so you see like assume my arm is the ham yep i'll just attach the horn and then the main arm will flip Rotate down like a pivot. Mm -hmm. And at this point, this arm's down there when it goes to grab the bar. Okay, so this this point isn't up while it's grabbing that. And then the yeah. whole thing pivots and it just sets down just for a level two ascent, yes? Yeah. Okay. And for your drivetrain, you're using, I would assume, 435s or like an 18 to 1 gear ratio on there, it's something like that? It's actually 15 to 1. 15 to 1. Okay. Robotic. Yep. Rev. Yep. And then... Are what are you using? Are you using odometry at all on here? Yeah. Yeah. What do you use for that? It's the from the Go Builder. We use two odometry from Go Builder. Okay. Yeah. And sure. then you use a, a pinpoint computer on that. Yeah. This yeah. inside the robot. Okay. Yeah. It's hidden down on the bottom. Uh. And then, what are you most proud of on this robot? What are you really happy about with this? Well, I would say it's the flip bump structure mm. because it's so sophisticated and was really cost us a lot of time. Take a, take us a lot of time to design it. Yeah. So yeah, you see this, the one that controlling the pivots mm -hmm. of this claw. You see it's going all the way down to here, coordinate with this timing belt, all the way down to here with this servo. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing how it's just kind of tucked in there. You'd almost miss it if you weren't looking for it, right? Yeah. And then it tucks in, and then it moves on to this side. It transfers over to the other side, so it's not just one large continuous belt. You're actually going through multiple belts. To really get yourself up to that exactly and then i think in driver practice is also something to talk about like you you clearly spend a lot of time driver practice how much time would you say you spent on driver practice Cut. yep ask him sure i'm the engineer yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh i'm just curious how Interview. many yeah. how many hours you spent on driver practice because you've clearly sunk a lot of time yeah you know that. before the match i spent maybe more than 30 more than 24 hours wow yeah okay. yeah to to practice the Tyler player. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and when did you guys have this robot finished before the competition for Europeans? Was it like a week before? Was it a month before? Well, quite long, actually, because this was finished 
before our original championship. Okay. And yeah. when was that? Back in February. February? Yeah. Okay, so this robot hasn't changed much from February. Well, actually we did a lot of changes. Yep. So you see the timing belt here. As I mentioned before, yeah. it's a five M yes. timing belt. Yes. We actually used a three M timing belt at that time. And okay, I guess when I say changes, I mean no major structural changes beyond the 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 core design of it. You yeah. iterated to obviously use different timing belts so that it's a little more efficient. But the core concept of one large pivoting arm with another sub arm rotating around that hasn't changed since February. No, it hasn't okay. changed. Well, I still have to say that the the change of the timing belt is pretty yeah. crucial. Yes, because while we are using we were using the three M timing belt. Yep, was literally just a disaster because yes. it just kept lifting up. Yeah, it just yep. the timing belt was slacking. Yes, and... yeah. This isn't to say that you're not iterating. It's more to show the importance of for other teams just how much time you need to practice autonomous and driving practice to perform really highly. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. Well, thanks so much for for sharing your robot, man. You should be really proud of where you guys go. This is an awesome design.